Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's Rail Splitter Athletics Report. I am your host, Rusty Peace. We are closing in on the end of the month of October, and with that, a lot of LMU athletic teams jostling for position in the South Atlantic Conference races. The Lady Rail Splitter volleyball team has been idle since last Thursday after their loss to Mars Hill. This Friday, of course, they're going to take on Anderson. Saturday's match with Newberry. And we're going to talk with Jenny Michael tonight live here in the studio. She's our first live guest of the season as far as the coaches go, and so we're looking forward to that. Haley O'Dana is going to join us a little bit later on and talk about the uh, Lincoln Memorial University men's soccer late run here in the regular season to uh, make a stab at possibly catch catching uh, the uh, regular season or conference tournament titles. And then, of course, the uh, struggles the Lady Rail Splitters have been through over the last three matches, and that's all coming up a little bit later on. Folks, don't forget as well, we're going to talk uh, later on tonight about the cross-country team and their efforts on the South Atlantic Conference Championships this weekend. Stay with us here on the Rail Splitter Athletics Report. If you love your car or truck, let us help you keep it clean at Soapy J's. Soapy J's has unlimited wash plans to fit every budget. Try our $5 express wash or one of our three monthly wash plans. The wheel deal, the Soapy J, or the new Blast Wax. With our monthly wash plans, if you pay with credit card, all you do is pay for the present month and your card will be billed on the first of each month. Don't forget, Soapy J's has free vacuums with any wash. Soapy J's express car wash open seven days a week. Let us help keep your car or truck clean at Soapy J's. Soapy J's on the Cumberland Gap Parkway, Middlesboro. The J. Frank White Academy is more than a high school. Your child will have room to grow in mind, body, and spirit. Small, safe learning environments, individualized learning plans, and cutting-edge technology. Every child deserves a quality education in a safe, nurturing environment. Our college prep program teaches a love of learning, self-discipline, and service to others. The Academy is fully accredited by Advanced Ed. You have a choice at the J. Frank White Academy. Since 1973, DeRoyal has been a leader and an innovator in manufacturing products for the healthcare industry. DeRoyal supplies more than 20,000 products and product lines such as acute care, orthopedics, wound care, and trauma. DeRoyal is proud to be the largest supplier of orthopedic soft goods to clinics and hospitals in the nation. Since its start in Tazewell, Tennessee, DeRoyal has grown to open factories in over 29 locations worldwide and employs over 2,000 people. DeRoyal, a name you can trust and an employer you can count on. Looking for efficient, compassionate, and comprehensive health care for you and your family? Visit University Medical Clinic. All providers are faculty members of LMU's DeBus College of Osteopathic Medicine and are board certified in their specialty. Multiple specialties available including family medicine, pediatrics, OBGYN, and osteopathic manipulative medicine with locations in Harrogate, Tazewell, and New Tazewell, and most insurance plans accepted. University Medical Clinic is here to serve you. Call 423-869-7193 for an appointment. University Medical Clinic. Welcome back to the Rail Splitter Athletics Report. Last Thursday night, Jenny Michael and her team traveled over to Mars Hill, North Carolina and took out Tony Fontanelle and the Lions of Mars Hill College and unfortunately came out with a loss. Now, uh, the two teams split the home and away series during the regular season, uh, but of course this Friday night will be the first time the Lady Rail Splitters have been back in action since that loss. And Jenny Michael joins us now. First of all, Coach, welcome to the show. You're our first coach Thanks. of the season. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Coach, uh, let's talk about uh, this break that you guys have been in. I know you and I had a, a little opportunity to talk a few minutes ago for the uh, radio and the LMU Sports Minute, but a uh, pretty long extended break here in the month of October, right in the middle of the South Atlantic Conference schedule. And according to what you were telling me, it probably couldn't have come at a better time. Yeah, sincerely. Uh, you know, we had a, a seven match stretch within 11 days. And that was very physically exhausting as well as probably even more so very mentally challenging uh, for us. But we had the opportunity to take a few days off of fall break. And the girls got a chance. Some went home. Some just kind of relaxed, caught up on homework, different things of that nature. And then I actually came back from a trip from Florida, came back. And as I'm getting ready to walk into the gym for practice, our trainer comes out and is like, Coach, <laughs> got some bad news for you. And that... For, for the past two days for that, we literally had seven of our 14 young ladies out with sicknesses or, or different illnesses, things like that. So um, we were able to practice on Wednesday night with a full squad. I say full, we weren't quite at 100% each individual, but 
you know, we definitely had people participating and hopefully back on track for this Friday. It's, it's, it's got to be a nightmare. I mean, you know when you go away and you have uh, an assistant or an athletic trainer that comes at you with that look. <laughs> I mean, you, you know, oh, no, this is not going to be good. What's this about? Yeah, it, it wasn't. I mean, I got off the plane, hopped in the car, drove up to campus, was getting ready to walk into the gym, and it was our trainer and our assistant, actually. They both kind of just, like, busted out the door and <laughs> caught me before I could get in. And they had that look, and I was like, oh, boy, what's wrong? That's, <laughs> oh, that's my first comment, what's wrong? <laughs> let's, uh, let's go back to last Thursday night over in Mars Hill, North Carolina. When, when Tony Fontenelle and his team came here and played, I mean, he, his, his teams play with a lot of fire. Mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're much improved. They, they've got a lot more athleticism than I've seen them have in recent years. But, uh, you know, when we started here, I want to say it went four sets, if I'm not mistaken. It, wasn't, it did, I believe. It wasn't a three-set victory for us, but we did come out with a win, three to one, I believe. We go over to Mars Hill, and, and to be honest with you, I, I, I thought it would be close. Yeah, it was definitely a close match for sure. Um, you know, we lost lost in four, and, and to be perfectly honest, we had multiple opportunities to be in a lot better position. Uh, we were in the third set, and we actually were right on the door, right on the verge of winning. We were up 24 to 20, and unfortunately uh, just couldn't close out. So they go on to be victorious that third set, and honestly a huge, huge shift in momentum being able to come back uh, from that kind of deficit on the scoreboard and then when it got to the fourth set then they just had too much momentum and we weren't able to overcome the momentum that we lost. So This team is, uh, is one that uh, you, you graduated a lot of veteran players a year ago and uh, you, you had a great recruiting year, you brought in a lot of new faces and I know that you know from your philosophy and we've talked about this many times, I brought it up more times than you'd probably like to hear, the fact that you do have a lot of youth on this team but uh, despite that youth, I mean, you, you still, let's say that they're all new players. Let's say that they're experienced as juniors, college transfers, or otherwise. You've still got to establish a, a chemistry uh, among this team and uh, a continuity in the style of play. And I think that uh, for the most part, they, they've done a really nice job of that. You've done a really nice job of that. Well, thank you. Honestly, all, all the credit goes to the young ladies. I mean, we, we talk about it when we bring them in as recruits and we remind them when we're coming in and we're, we're going through the daily grind, you know, we don't have to always like each other all the time. We really try to promote the idea that we're a family. And just like, you know, a family, you don't necessarily always like your brothers or sisters, or sometimes, you know, mom or dad says something to kind of irritate you, but at the end of the day, you love each other and you take care of one another. And that's really, I think, kind of helped us along and through some tough times. I mean, it's definitely not been, you know, all sugar and cupcakes kind of season at all. We've had We've had some failures and we've had some things that we've had to overcome and we're going to continue to have to fight and grind and get better and go through more experiences, but we're going to do that together. That's a, that's a great analogy because, uh, you know, you, you and I have talked about it and, and I asked you if you looked at yourself as somewhat of a mother figure towards these girls and, and you don't. You look at it more as a, a, a bigger sister type. Situation. Absolutely, yeah. Everybody, you know, has a mom and dad and, you know, for us, that's not our role to replace that. You know, we're here to be more of a, you know, a mentor, more of a big sister type thing. And, you know, I kind of joke around with them all the time. I'm like, I'm way worse than your mom because your mom has to love you. <laughs> and I don't necessarily have to. <laughs> oh, only uh, the words only a coach can get away with right there. <laughs> coach, Friday night we've got Anderson coming into the house. And this is a match that, uh, quite frankly, I, I know that in talking with you earlier in the year, you felt like we should have won down in Anderson, South Carolina. We didn't. They're going to come in here Friday evening, and we'll have another shot at them. I believe that one went five down in Anderson. It did. Uh, then, of course, on Saturday you've got Newberry. Uh, again, you and I talked earlier, but and I'm trying not to be redundant, but what, what does this team have to do to get back on track and to really focus over the next few weeks for the final couple of weeks of South Atlantic Conference play? Well, we definitely just, I mean, bottom line, black and white of it is we need to win. And in order to win, we need to improve our execution. Uh, we talk a lot about our ball control and to be honest our ball control has been playing at a pretty high level relatively consistently so for us now we need to take the next step and if our ball control maintains its consistency our offense needs to help that and be able to execute and terminate on the ball a little bit better than we have been. What's Anderson going to bring to the table Friday night that we're going to have to shut down and I know you've mentioned ball control is our key so what is it that we're going to have to do to stop them? 
we're going to have to force them into positions to be a little bit more uncomfortable than they were at their place. You know, when we went down to their gym, we just, you know, didn't necessarily serve as aggressively as we perhaps could have, and they were able to run their offense. You know, they have a middle who's very outstanding, one of the top players. I believe she's leading the conference in kills this season, and, you know, we're going to need to find a way to slow her down for sure. 7 o'clock uh, first serve on Saturday, or I beg your pardon, on Friday night with the uh, Trojans of Anderson. 2 o'clock first serve on Saturday with Newberry. Real quick, Coach, we've got about 45 seconds left. Uh, Taking one match at a time, but this is a one once a week show. Uh, Saturday's battle with Newberry is going to be a tough one. Absolutely. You know, Newberry and Queens, in my opinion, are two of the best teams in the conference whose records do not reflect how strong they are. Uh, just a couple weeks ago, Newberry went down and was playing Armstrong Atlantic, who's arguably one of the either the number one or one or two teams in the in the entire region right now. They're undefeated. And Newberry battled them to a five set five set match. So for them to play a team like that of that caliber at that high of a level and take them to five and be ranked where they are in our conference right now, it's very scary. Coach, good luck this weekend. Thank you. Lady Rail Splitters nine and four in conference play going into the weekend. They're right up there among the top, right around the second spot in the league. So best of luck to Jenny Michael and her squad. Let's take a time out. We'll be back here on the Rail Splitter Athletics Report. MyCokeRewards.com. No matter whether it's breakfast, lunch, or dinner, Subway of Harrogate and Middlesbrough has your fresh interests at heart. On your way to work, try one of our mouth-watering breakfast sandwich or flatbread omelets. If it's lunch or dinner time, choose from our wide selection of classic, select, or premium sandwiches, all made to your order. If you're serving a crowd, Subway has sandwich platters, giant subs, box lunches, and even cookie platters. Whether it's dine-in or carry-out, you can eat healthy and eat fresh at Subway. Subway, 362 Catawba Avenue in Harrogate and on the corner of the Village Square Mall, Middlesbrough. It's the Old Town Grill. The Old Town Grill is a special place where you bring more than family, more than friends. Bring a hearty appetite. Because at the Old Town Grill, you'll never walk away hungry. A delicious change from the ordinary. The perfect place to bring the entire family. The best food and plenty of it. Join the fun and treat your appetite to something special. It's the OTG. The OTG is the place to be. I will help families adopt children from around the world and in our own backyard. I am teaching ethics to the next generation of lawyers. I will make a difference for the underserved of this region. I will be an advocate for my clients. As a prosecutor, I fought for those who couldn't speak for themselves. I'm a lawyer and professor. I will be a lawyer. I will be a lawyer. I will be a lawyer. Welcome back to the Rail Splitter Athletics Report. Joined now by Haley O'Dana, head coach of the Lincoln Memorial University men's and women's soccer teams. Coach, welcome. Thank you. All right, let's let's uh, let's jump right into it. Uh, it's been kind of a role reversal for the men and the women over the last few weeks. The women were red hot to start the season. Uh, one of the uh, better starts in recent memory that I can remember. But over the last three matches, they've dropped three straight now, and they've all been heartbreaking losses. The men, on the other hand, got off to a rocky start, and they won three straight. So what's what's going on here? It's 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 soccer. We've talked about it, and it's strange at this point in the year. I mean, the ladies, uh, we, we're putting them through such a hard um, uh, combination of settings. You know, I mean, I'm not looking for excuses, but they go to uh, USC Aiken, a very irregular field. That um, you know, our team is such a possessing team. We need a good pitch. So very regular field, very physical team, and and. Um, um, it really, it really made it hard for us to get our, our, our passing game going. Then we go to Anderson, the smallest field in the conference, bunch of bodies, seal bodies. They just played, uh, you know, their odds to, to, to try to uh, sneak uh, a goal against us, and they did, and they shut down the house. And then we go to Tuscum, the largest field in the conference, <laughs> that then we play extremely well. 
but we're not used to such a huge field and, and, and uh, we were out a little bit at times during the game, but we took it to the Tusculum. So the ladies, I, I'm pleased with the way they're playing, you know, I mean, I, I want to win, of course, but um, yeah, if we keep playing the way that we're playing, we're going to make another run. All right, let's, let's go back to last Saturday. That uh, would be the first game in this week's version of the Rail Splitter Athletics Report. You traveled to Anderson, South Carolina. Uh, took on the Trojans. Anderson uh, is, you know, they're they're one of the uh, leagues in the or one of the conference teams that actually uh, gets a lot of funding to their programs. They've got great facilities, uh, but it's a tough place to play because they are competitive and they do have some some extreme talent down there. And uh, let's start with the women's matchup. Yeah, you're looking at uh, the settings there. If, if you visually just look at the field, you can tell that the distance from the box to the sideline is the minimum possible. And they put a bunch of bodies behind, uh, behind us the whole time. And they played their odds by, by forcing corner kicks against us. They beat us like 10 to 1 in corner kicks. That was their game plan and very well executed. So it made it very difficult for us to possess that day. Um, we had plenty of chances, plenty of chances, as we always do. We really create a lot of opportunities. Our team this year really gives themselves a shot. But that day, we didn't put them away, you know. Uh, if, if at the end of the day, if, if you summarize the, the game, it's about whoever puts more <laughs> at the back of the net. All right, of course, the Lady Rail Splitters uh, fell in that one. I believe 1 0 was the final, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. And uh, that would have been, uh, would have represented their second uh, consecutive loss at that time. Uh, Coach, this is a team that you added four new players uh, from last year's squad. But you felt like offensively you had more options, and we are getting more shots. What have we got to do to put these shots on frame? Well, heads up uh, with the level of goalkeeping in our conference. You know, I mean, uh, uh, some of these games uh, that were incredible saves made. Um, you know, that, that that doesn't take away our finishing, but gives them credit for for the incredible kinds of um, shop stopping. But um, uh, at uh, narrowing down to what else can we do uh, perhaps we need to get a little more at the end of crosses you know sometimes we make great flank play and and we bring maybe two players uh, to finish and that diminishes your chances to put the ball in so our offensive mids and even our outside mids on the other side have to make a bigger effort to be at the end of the crosses that's one we need to shoot more because we are such uh, it's the term in, in soccer, such a big foot team. You know, we, we got big shooters, we got strong shooters, and, and that comes from lefties, from righties, from, from all sorts of positions that sometimes I feel that we're content to, to pass it and, and we need to force the issue on shooting. And then we need to come up big on, on, on that one when the game is on the line, and that possibly is the difference between the men and the women when the game is on the line that I'll say, give me the ball, I'll do it, you know, uh, and, and that's a sign of a young team, I guess, but uh, we, we do need to get there uh, soon. <laughs> I, uh, you know, you mentioned the keepers a minute ago throughout the league, and uh, I, I don't remember the young lady's name, but the keeper we faced that played for Carson Newman, uh, I think she was from Northern Ireland, I thought she was probably, now I've only seen a handful of matches this year, she was probably as good a keeper as I've seen uh, in the South Atlantic Conference in terms of our opponents since we've been in the league? Well, I, I take my word, I, I've seen keepers just as good or better throughout the league so far, so that, that gives you an idea of how hard it is for our forwards. Uh, yesterday or last night at Tusculum, the, the, the three saves that culminated on the win for Tusculum were incredible. Uh, it, it would rival probably the top three saves I've seen in my past 21 years. So that's the kind of, uh, uh, um, uh, you know, obstacles that uh, our ladies got to gotta, uh, face. But um, we're not looking for excuses, you know. Uh, we're going to keep on plugging. But um, like I told the women, they're playing like champions. They're working in practice like champions. We, we, we'll get it. We'll get it. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's impossible that um, we're going to get all the bad breaks from here on out. But... Um, we're positioning ourselves that we're still within striking range. Uh, the rankings for the NCAA came, came, came out uh, yesterday, and Newberry is among the, the top uh, uh, eight teams, and we beat Newberry. So now we see Wingate that is also among the top six, and um, 
we got to take care of them. And, and then, you know, uh, Lord willing, we're, we're going to make it to a tournament uh, deep that we're going to see Lenore Ryan again. And who knows, if we steal that one, we're in Nationals. So um, we're not that far out. Well, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. And this weekend, obviously, we've got uh, Catawba at home. Now, Catawba historically has always been a tough matchup for us. Fortunately, we've got them here on the LMU Soccer Complex field, and that's a 1 o'clock start Saturday. Yeah, our women love our field. You know, we, 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 I think we lost only one game at home this year, and it was the, the Carson Newman game that we dominated. Uh, so we do well at home because it's a good pitch. It's the perfect size for them, and, and it's just just it's a little bit of a, a confidence that they, they have. Uh, they, they change their, their, uh, their, um, the way they walk and the way they, they play, you know. But... Um, Catawba will be young, very athletic, and very uh, channel-oriented, what we call channel-oriented. They're going to play the, the sidelines. Uh, and they're coming from a huge win. They just beat Lenore Ryan, which is very impressive. Um, but uh, I, I really feel that our ladies, somebody's going to pay for these past three games, and I think Catawba has their number. All right, let's move over to the men. Obviously, the rail splitters have been on a tear here the last few matches, and rightly so, folks. If you followed them throughout the year, they took their lumps earlier in the year, and it was heartbreaking losses. It wasn't uh, – there's not going to be any blowouts in this league. I mean, you're just not going to see that. They lost uh, – they played four overtime matches. They lost, I think, three of those in overtime, but they tied one of them. Uh, but they've had – they had some losses that uh, were really disappointing. One of those I, I look back on was the Queens loss. Uh, but since that time, they have just really turned it around with a 180-degree turn. Now they've won three straight, and they're, they're moving up the ladder, Coach. We could easily be undefeated. You're right. Um, but you're also right to say that in this league, you know, there's no breathing room. If you don't deliver day in, day out, you can find yourself out of the tournament. Yesterday, last night, we're, we're watching footage of uh, Anderson, who shockingly enough, Yesterday, the NCAA rankings came out and places Anderson as, get this, the number one team in the region. And we beat him. We beat him, and, and, that's, uh, and, and Anderson took another loss uh, midweek after this game. So they're going to drop a little bit, but we're going to go up a little bit. Um, we're, we're among the top ten. And uh, so uh, I look at last night's game. We played Tusculum, and, and we beat him as well. But I'm thinking here, this is a team that is – near the bottom of the conference and boy it took everything out of us to beat him so the distance between us i've said this before heaven and hell in soccer is so small that uh, we we if if you don't deliver consistently you can find yourself in a big hole but the boys they're still within uh, a very good uh, um, chance to to uh, make a run to win the conference and also to qualify to nationals Mario Pinto with the goal right there to give the rail splitters the victory over Anderson. Now, last night, Coach, you traveled over to Greenville, Tennessee to take on in-state uh, rival Tusculum College. Uh, Tusculum actually banged the, home, the uh, opening goal of the match in on you, but you came back to score back-to-back -back goals by Harry Solomons and, of course, by your senior Callum Holm on a penalty kick and took the 2-1 to -one victory out of Greenville. Eight out of ten of the last times you faced the Tusculum Pioneers, you've had their number, and that's got to be getting old over there if you're wearing an orange and black uniform. Yeah, but I tell you, probably those eight out of ten times were incredibly hard. Um, our defenders came up big yesterday. Funny enough, our, our defenders scored two goals. You know, sometimes people think it's all about our followers, but it doesn't matter. You know, whoever, whoever uh, steps up to the plate uh, and wants to deliver will count. Marcel, consistently our keeper, um, makes very, very strong saves, and, and he came up a couple of times early in the match because Tusculum threw everything at us and, and scored first, as you mentioned. And, and within the first 10 minutes, I'm like, we're in, we're in to, to defend for dear life. But as I always, uh, our style is, we chip away, chip away, chip away. Our possession on a big few, as I mentioned, started wearing them down, and we stuck with the game plan. and. and Got the tying goal, and then the, even before the end of halftime, we got uh, the, the the turnaround goal. But um, second half, we had to maintain that that spirit of possessing and letting them chase us. And then the mind game started playing because Tuscum lost so many to us and so many in league this year that uh, I think they, they started their spirits broke. Uh, but um, um, as I said, Tuscum easily could have been contending to win the conference this year. 
Coach, we've got about 30 seconds left in this segment of the show. Uh, of course, Saturday, you're at home as well with the men. Catawba coming into the house, that's going to be a tough, I think they're 4-4-1 four, four and one in the league, something like that. They're very close to where the rail splitters are, so it's a critical battle. And they're coming from a big win. They beat uh, Queens, so it will be tough. They're athletic. They're similar to their women. They're, they're channel-oriented, and, and, and they're going to be on a momentum. What have we got to do to come away with a fourth consecutive win and a win over the Indians uh, specifically? Well, we cannot be scored on. Uh, first, we, we have to, to, to take it to them and, and, and try to put in the first one. But uh, we definitely need to possess well. We definitely need to finish good crosses. Uh, we're going to be the bigger team possibly. And, and we um, cannot have turnovers that will give a, a team that is direct like them uh, momentum for counterattack. Coach, good luck. Thank you. Saturday's kickoff or first touch, if you will, 3.30 for the men. We're going to take this time out. And we'll be back here on the Rail Spitter Athletics Report. I deal with life and death situations. We touch a lot of lives every day. People's lives are in your hands. I will be a nurse. I will be a nurse. The Duncan School of Law at LMU, where innovative teaching meets cutting edge technology. If you love your car or truck, let us help you keep it clean at Soapy J's. Soapy J's has unlimited wash plans to fit every budget. Try our $5 express wash or one of our three monthly wash plans. The wheel deal, the Soapy J, or the new Blast Wax. With our monthly wash plans, if you pay with credit card, all you do is pay for the present month and your card will be billed on the first of each month. Don't forget, Soapy J's has free vacuums with any wash. Soapy J's express car wash, open seven days a week. Let us help keep your car or truck clean at Soapy J's. Soapy J's on the Cumberland Gap Parkway, Middlesboro. We represent the Coke brand, and we would love to somehow bring some kind of legal action against Coke Zero. There might be some taste infringement issues. There's really no legal concepts of a company bringing a lawsuit against itself. If this is the king of the jungle, they're acting like the toucan that's right. on the branch, real colorful and preening, right. and showing off, and hey, look at, look at us. I want to take a stick and knock that toucan off the branch. Yeah. Da, 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 da. The J. Frank White Academy is more than a high school. Your child will have room to grow in mind, body, and spirit. Small, safe learning environments, individualized learning plans, and cutting edge technology. Every child deserves a quality education in a safe, nurturing environment. Our college prep program teaches a love of learning, self-discipline, and service to others. The Academy is fully accredited by Advanced Ed. You have a choice at the J. Frank White Academy. Folks, I'd like to remind everybody the Lincoln Memorial University men's and women's cross country teams will hit the road this weekend when they travel over to Montreat, North Carolina, site of the 2013 Food Line South Atlantic Conference men's and women's cross country championships. That'll be held on Black Mountain. We want to wish Jeremy Donahue and uh, both of his squads the best of luck in their endeavors to capture the 2013 SAC uh, meet titles there in that championship. So, best of luck to. Uh, to both the LMU men's and women's cross country teams. Folks, if you'd like to keep up to date on all that's going on with Lincoln Memorial University Athletics, pull up the LMU Athletics website, www.lmurailsplitters.com. You'll find all the latest scores, facts, statistics, player profiles, rosters, schedules, news releases, videos, programs, much more. It's all on the LMU Athletics website at www.lmurailsplitters.com. So do check it out. Also, if you're not around the computer, just want to know a score, you can call the LMU Sports Line 24 hours a day, seven days a week, toll-free anywhere in the United States, 1-800-325-0900, extension 6400. If you get the attendant, ask for it or dial it. And if you're local, 869-6400. That's all the time we have for tonight's show. Until next Thursday night, for everybody behind the scenes, I'm Rusty Peace. Good night, everybody.